Well, I first met Robert Fox a few years ago, and he was almost legally blind at that time. And I then kind of lost touch with Robert over time, and he, uh, I heard later that he had had surgery on his eyes and got his vision back, and I was very happy to hear him. But his example, in my mind, in my opinion, is, is sort of epitomizes gover government corruption at every level. It's where men come in and take the law to do evil, wicked stuff. I mean, I'm a minister, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a truth lover and a truth seeker. There are other people in this world who utilize uh, their jobs, whether it's judges, police officers, officers uh, and others for, for shady purposes, for purposes that are unconstitutional. You know, I agree with Thomas Jefferson, I believe was the man who said, uh, uh, I will not hear any further talk of men and their goodness. Bind them with the chains of the Constitution. Well, unfortunately, we as a people over the last 200, 250 years have failed generation by generation to bind these scoundrels by the chains of the Constitution. Therefore, they get us in their courts and they do their unconstitutional and often even unstatutory dirty deeds against us. And we are clueless. We don't even know what's going on because we have lost the concept of we the people. And who really is sovereign in America? It is not the President of the United States. It is not the federal government. It is not the state government. It is you and me are sovereign. And what we can't accomplish as an individual, we must go to our state. And our state has constitutions that guarantees us the right to life, liberty, property, therefore the illegality of all property taxes, and the pursuit of happiness. And then whatever the state can't do alone, we band together and the federal government, limited federal government, the total out of control executive branch and the lazy, corrupt legislative branch is what we have today. Now I'm not saying they're not good men like Ron and Rand Paul that are trying to make a difference within government. Can we save our constitutional republic today? If we are to save it, we must return to we the people concept. The idea that Robert talked about is a constitutional one. We the people are sovereign. We must first govern ourselves and our families and do right and live right. And then we go to the state and we do the same. And then the state has has, I, I'm not a legal, uh, I'm not familiar with every legal term, but I know that states' rights is now a new issue. States' rights. Sheriffs are standing firm against the federal government in Indiana and in California and some places in Texas. Why? Because it's constitutional. It's right. Sheriff Mack won a case all the way to the Supreme Court affirming 1988 states' rights have, have superiority over the federal government. We have an out-of-control federal government. We have an out-of-control FEMA. We have an out-of-control Homeland Security. All of this design is designed right out of Lenin and Trotsky and Stalin, right out of Nazi Germany. Folks, we the people not getting together and talking good, but being sovereigns without subjects and knowing who we are and acting accordingly. There's the answer.
Tell me why Robert's a target. Robert is a target from my imperfect understanding because Robert has stood for many constitutional principles. And he has helped people who didn't have the wherewithal. Not being attorney, he, an attorney, he is free. He's not an agent of anybody's court. He can talk to people and help people. And the good old boy judges, lawyers groups, they don't like that. And they have been trying to put Robert away, as I understand it, having read that citation of uh, United States versus Fox for about 30 years. And they have tried um, unsuccessfully. And now the man goes down almost blind to Jacksonville, Texas, has a dream of doing something a little bit larger, sponsoring seminars, helping people in Bible study, which is hand in glove with constitutional thinking, buying an old church building. And the local yokels, the local people, see him as an outsider. And they want to persecute him. And so one uh, rumor after another and the, and the newspapers involved and the police department is involved and some of the local corrupt people are involved and they vilify him in the press. And now everybody in court has read, well, he must be guilty because I saw him associated with drugs. He had nothing to do with drugs. He's a gentle old man. He's never, to my knowledge, in all of the years that I've known him, which is not that many, what, 10 years maybe, Robert, or less? Never, never, never. He is a target because he helps people understand maybe a little better and other things, and I don't know everything Robert does, but he helps them understand a little bit better the idea of constitution. What is it to be a constitutionalist? And what is it to be a true constitutional sovereign that they want to vilify? Well, listen, folks, enemies, friends, everybody out there, I see myself as a constitutional sovereign under my God. I'm not a rebel. It's not a rebel to be a sovereign. Sovereigns without subjects, we were declared to be 200, 250 years ago. Are we still?